Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I share the Prime Minister's tribute to Private Rhys Miller, who died while serving in the 1st Battalion, the Yorkshire Regiment. Our thoughts are with his family, his friends, and of course the entire regiment. I spent the weekend congratulating the NHS on its 70th birthday in Nye Bevan's birthplace. And the message from the crowd there was the NHS is great, let's fund it properly. Yeah. And whilst we're sp- and whilst- And whilst we're speaking of emergency services, Mr Speaker, I do think we should send a message from this House of our thanks and support to all those firefighters tackling these huge fires on Saddleworth Moor and Winter Hill. And of course I congratulate the England team on a fantastic performance last night. Wish them well on Saturday in the match against Sweden. Mr Speaker, with... With fares, with fares rising above inflation, passenger numbers falling and services being cut, does the Prime Minister accept her failure on yet another public services, the buses? Can I, can I, can I first of all, Can I first of all say to the right honourable gentleman that I absolutely agree with him, and I'm sure all members of this House, that our thanks should go to the firefighters and the troops who have been struggling to deal with these terrible fires that we have seen on the moorlands in the north of of Britain. Uh, On the point about the buses, I would merely point out to him that actually I think we should look at the responsibility that local authorities have up and down this country for the the buses. can I also just, can I also just uh, comment on a remark that the Right Honourable Gentleman made about putting sufficient funding into the National Health Service? At the last election, the Labour Party said that giving the NHS an extra 2.2% a year would make it the envy of the world. Ah. Well, we're not giving it an extra 2.2% or indeed 2.5% or 3%. We're giving it an extra 3.4% a year. He tries to say that's not enough. Which, which should we, what should we believe? What he said before the election or what he says after the election? Jeremy Corbyn! Mr Speaker, in case the Prime Minister had forgotten, my question was about buses. <laughs> and, since, and since 2010... And since 2010, her government has cut 46% from bus budgets in England, passenger numbers are falling, and amongst elderly and disabled, it's fallen by 10%. Her government belatedly committed to keeping the free bus pass, but a bus pass isn't much use if there isn't a bus. So does the Prime Minister think it's fair that bus fares have risen by 13% more than inflation since 2010? To the right honourable gentleman, he he, uh, says that he asked originally uh, in his first question about buses. He did indeed, and I gave him an answer in reference to buses. But what he cannot do is simply stand up and make assertions about what the government is doing without expecting those to be challenged, which is exactly what I did on his funding for the National Health Service. What we have seen across the country, and it was right that we commit, made that commitment in relation to bus passes. What, what we have seen about, across the country is that we are seeing that as people's working habits are changing, that we are seeing people uh, a less usage of buses uh, around the country. But this is, something, this is something that we work with local authorities on. There are many uh, responsibilities that local authorities have in relation to buses, and I suggest that he ask some of those local authorities what they're doing about the buses in their own area. Mr Speaker, under this government, fares have risen three times faster than people's pay. Bus users are often people on lower income whose wages are lower than they were ten years ago in real terms and have suffered a benefit freeze. And this government, under their stewardship, has cut 500 bus routes every year, leaving many people more isolated, lonely and damaging our local communities. Does the Prime Minister believe that bus services are a public responsibility or just something you leave to the market? Can I say to the right honourable gentleman 
And uh, I, you know, I made the point on two occasions about the responsibilities that other ha others have in relation to buses. So he might, for example, look at what the Mayor of London, who I last looked at was a Labour politician, is doing in relation to buses in London. But he talks also about the impact of fares on low-income people. It is important that we consider the situation of people who are on low incomes. That's why it is this government that introduced the national living wage and has increased the national living wage. That is why it is this government that has taken four million people out of paying income tax altogether. That is helping people on low incomes in this country. Jeremy Corbyn! Mr Speaker, when Sadiq Khan ran for Mayor of London, he promised to freeze bus fares. And do you know what he's done? Frozen bus fares. If she's concerned... If she's concerned about the travel card fares, speak to the Secretary of State for Transport. He's the one that sets that fare. Mr Speaker, bus routes are being wiped out. 26 million fewer journeys made across the north of England and the Midlands under her government. So much for a northern powerhouse and a Midlands engine. Can we be clear? Does she think, does the Prime Minister think that deregulation of the bus industry, putting profit before passengers, has been a success or a failure? Can I say to the right honourable gentleman, he talks about what the Mayor of London has done. What have we seen on the number of people using buses in London? It's gone down uh, under, the, uh, under the current Mayor. But if he wants to talk about what Mayors are doing, I'm very happy to talk about what Andy Street, the Conservative Mayor in the West Midlands, has done. He's extended free bus fares to apprentices and students. Yeah. Jeremy Corbyn! Mr Speaker, it'll be a Labour government that saves the bus industry and a Labour government that gives, that gives free fares to under 26-year-olds. Mr Speaker, the truth is, since deregulation, fares have risen faster than inflation, ridership has fallen, and these private bus monopolies have made a profit since 2010 of £3.3 billion. That's what the Tories give you in public transport. The government has given Metro mayors the powers to franchise and regulate to secure better services. Why won't the government extend that power to all local authorities? To the right honourable gentleman, that of course the local authorities do have some responsibilities and capabilities in relation to subsidising bus routes and fares. And yes, we have given those powers to the uh, given those powers to the metro mayors. But can I also say to the right honourable gentleman, he talked a little earlier about uh, reference what was happening in the Northern Powerhouse and the Midlands Engine. I'll tell him what's happening in the Northern Powerhouse and the Midlands Engine: more investment in our public transport, more investment in our roads, more investment in the infrastructure that brings jobs to people in the north and people across the Midlands. Jeremy Corbyn! It's a shame this government is so shy of giving powers to local authorities and instead more interested in cutting their resources. But, Mr Speaker, under this government, bus services are in crisis. Fares are increasing, routes being cut, passenger numbers falling isolating elder and disabled people, damaging communities, high streets, and actually leading to more congestion in our towns and cities. People spending more time travelling to work or school. It's bad for our climate change commitments, bad for our air quality. So will the Prime Minister at last recognise the crucial importance of often the only mode of transport available for many people and end the cuts to bus budgets and give councils the power to ensure everyone gets a regulated bus service wherever they live. The right honourable gentleman, I will I'll take no lessons from the right honourable gentleman in devolution to local authorities. Which party is it that has established those metro mayors and given them those powers? It's the Conservative Party in government. Which party is it that is doing growth deals around the country, giving new responsibilities and local authorities? It is this Conservative government. And what did we see in the North East? When we were talking to uh, Labour councils in the North East about them having uh, a devolution deal, Labour council leaders in the North East rejected that devolution. That's 
what the Labour Party is doing. He wants to know. He wants to know what this government is delivering for the people of this country, for the North, the South, the Midlands, for every part of this country. Record high employment, rising wages, falling borrowing, stronger environmental protection, and a Britain fit for the future.